one of the topics that crops up every now and again, especially in regulated industries, is whether or not you need to encrypt the data in transit when you send from on-premises into the cloud. Let's break it down into three areas and we'll use the famous golden circle from Simon Sinek to make sure we try and capture every angle. So let's just mention that there is a, a why angle to this. Why would you choose to do the encryption? And this could be for one of several reasons. It could be down to a trust conversation. You're trying to align to some sort of regulator or accreditation that you need to achieve that stipulates data in transit encryption. It could be down to a frank conversation that's needed internally around, this is just the way we've always done it, inertia, and perhaps we don't need to do it anymore. And quite often it's down to, well, we've got old applications, legacy applications that don't support things like TLS. There's no encryption at the application level. So we want to mitigate that by having an encrypted network layer. I would say whilst in this video, we're going to focus on IPsec over ExpressRoute. Don't forget that there is also the option to do MacSec, which is a link level encryption between Microsoft Edge routers and your routers if you go for ExpressRoute Direct. So that's where you get a physical port dedicated to you as a customer on our router, but that's a separate conversation. And to come back to the point I made initially, the reason why you're going down the path of having an encrypted hybrid connection will dictate the solution that you need. And MacSec is offering a different profile of risk mitigation to IPsec. But again, beyond the scope of this video. I do also want to share that the broader context here is this is something that most customers don't do. So most customers who have ExpressRoute connected to their MPLS networks, connected to their data centers, they are not running additional encryption overlays on top of that. That implicitly means that most customers that are using the cloud today trust their incumbent vendors to get them to the Microsoft Edge and they trust Microsoft to handle the traffic combined with a high level of probability that most of their applications are probably encrypted at the application level anyway, normally means that this level of complexity in the network, which I'll lay out, isn't something that most customers need to do. So I would say definitely step back and question, do I need to do this? So let's talk about the options you have for the what, the tools you would might use to do this. So first of all, the IPsec element. On premises, you'll need a device to terminate the IPsec. That's kind of not in scope of this video. I'll assume that you have a device on-prem, a router, a firewall that can do that. Then on the Azure side, you'll need a tunnel termination endpoint. And I'm going to zoom in on the VPN gateway in this video. Could also be virtual WAN, but also worth remembering that termination point in Azure could be a third-party appliance. It could be a third-party appliance doing IPsec but it could also be a third-party appliance doing SD-WAN. An SD-WAN proprietary protocol will almost definitely have a level of encryption as well. So SD-WAN over ExpressRoute could give you the same assurance that you need. Let's think about the, the ExpressRoute side, right? ExpressRoute comes in different flavors when it comes to peerings. You've got the Microsoft peering where you get public IPs from Microsoft. You could run the IPsec tunnel over the Microsoft peering. That's what customers have done for a long time. VPN Gateway exposes a public IP, terminate your tunnel on that. However, just bear in mind that you would have to take in all of the regional prefixes for that particular Azure region because there is no sub route filter or BGP community for just the VPN Gateway public IPs. So that's a, a challenge around public IP routing that you'd have to manage. In my experience, when customers today look at this solution, they're generally wanting to use a private peering and use the fact that the VPN gateway and Azure VWAN support the ability to land IPsec tunnels on private IPs today. And that's what I'm gonna concentrate on in this video. So we talked about the why, we talked about the tools. Let's talk about the how. How would you use these tools, configure them to get this solution in play? Well, probably you've come across a diagram that looks like this which is embedded within this document here on how to configure a site site VPN connection over ExpressRoute private peering. I'll leave the link to this document and the equivalent for virtual WAN in the links below. And in this document, we talk about some of the routing behaviors. 
So that's really where I want to concentrate in this video. Okay, so to do that, let's have a more detailed diagram. We've got on-prem here on the left, and we've got a couple of subnets on-prem with these IP ranges represented by these green lines. They are connected to a local area network, which ultimately takes you to firewall or router, which is the thing that is going to connect you to the outside world. And that's going to have an outside interface with a private IP, which is going to be where we terminate the IPsec tunnels. First of all, let's think about the underlay, which in our case is Express Route Private Peering. So that site, the on-premise site, is somehow connected to Express Route. So probably it's via a wide area network, maybe an MPLS connection, gets you to the routers that are terminating the Express Route connections from Microsoft over the Microsoft Private Peering into the Microsoft Edge routers. So there's a level of BGP that's happening here which is the private peering BGP relationship between your network and Microsoft. And then of course that express route circuit is connected back inside of the Microsoft network from the Microsoft pop at the edge there into the region where you have your express route virtual network gateway. Okay, so let's just think about how this underlay will behave. Does traditional express route. So from Azure, we have these two spokes here, spoke one and spoke two and they've got user remote gateway ticked and they're connected to the hub. So we know by default that that express route will advertise out both the hub range and the spoke ranges to on-prem. So down the red line here over the BGP session into the WAN, we're going to learn all of the prefixes for Azure. And that's important to remember that, right? They're all gonna be advertised in to the WAN, which means that by default, your on-prem network is going to learn about the prefixes in Azure via the underlay, via the red route. Now let's add in our IPsec tunnel. So we're gonna take our VPN gateway, which has got a private IP that lives in our hub VNet, and we're going to build an IPsec connection from on-prem into Azure. So establishing the tunnel is fairly straightforward. Configure that, deal with the resilience conversation, stand up BGP, et cetera, et cetera. At that point, your on-prem network will be getting the routes from Azure in two different places. The routes are still coming in via the underlay, via the red path, but in the same way that the express route gateway is advertising at those routes, so is the VPN gateway. So those routes from Azure will be popping out on the inside of the tunnel here as well. So effectively, this on-premises firewall here will know about the Azure Rangers via two paths. It will know about them via the green line and via the red line. So we're starting to see that the complexity here really is not in building the express route private peer in or building the IP septonome. The complexity is handling the routing from left to right and right to left, effectively making sure that traffic gets put into the green overlay and not allowed to flow on the red underlay. So let's think about the traffic in both directions and compare uh, and add detail to our diagram and contrast it with the documentation to round out this picture. So let's think about traffic from on-prem networks to Azure. So that, imagine you've got a virtual machine sat on this subnet here with the IP address 192.168.1.10 and it's trying to talk to something in Azure. It's trying to talk to one of these spoke VNets over here. It will have a, a route that says, you know, basically send anything to my default gateway that ultimately takes it to this local area network and then onwards to a device that has to make a routing decision of do I go on the red path or the green path. Effectively, what we're saying here is you will get from Microsoft by default the routes in the red and the routes in the, the green. So you, you've got various options on how you handle this. What you may choose to do is on your cloud edge routers, so when the routes leak into your network here, you may decide to only allow through the routes via express route for effectively your hub VNets. So you would only leak through this 10.10 slash 16 range, but you wouldn't allow the 10.11 and 10.12 ranges through. What that would mean is when, when that traffic leaks through here, and hits the firewall, 
The firewall would know enough information to build the tunnel, but it wouldn't have reachability to the spoke virtual networks. And therefore, when it comes to making a routing decision, it can only go via the green path because that's the only way it knows how to get to those spokes. I would say you have to kind of be careful with this because you may have other subnets in the, the hub, which you also want to push via the, the green overlay. Let's think about a different approach. Let's say you do allow in the routes on express route, you let, allow everything to get to this router and then effectively you have to tell it to make a routing decision. If you're running BGP from this device to your wide area network and you're running BGP across the VPN tunnel, on this device you can apply logic which says, hey, when I get a route via the green path and via the red path, make sure that I prefer the green path and you could do that various ways that local preference weight as path etc etc the important thing is that if you do that you need to make sure that when this device here builds the ip sectional to this private ip in azure the route to that single ip address has to go across express route so generally you would find a static route which says something like to get to this specific ip route that across the wide area network otherwise you'll get yourself into a, a routing loop where the tunnel endpoint is reachable across the tunnel itself uh, and that will just break the, the networking logic so you've handled how your network sends traffic to azure what you need to do now is think about how azure sends traffic to your network so imagine you've got a spoke vnet here replying to that vm on premises when it looks in its routing table how does it see the world how does it see the reachability to that address? And this is where we get into some of these recommendations here. So you see, we make two suggestions. One is you advertise more specific prefixes on the VPN. So that would be a cross express route here on your edge routers, you summarize your on-prem network. But when you advertise your internal ranges across the green line, you advertise the more specific prefixes. And then when the VMs look in their routing table and they go, well, how do I get to on-prem? They see the next hop as the VPN gateway because that's the more specific route. The other recommendation that we make is to advertise disjoint prefixes. What are we effectively saying there? Well, we're, I guess we're saying a couple of things. One is, one option that you have is when you advertise out your ranges from on-prem and you advertise them this way, maybe on the express route side, if you want to encrypt everything, the only IP address that you advertise on the underlay could be the outside interface of your on-prem firewall. And that means that Azure doesn't know about your internal prefixes via the underlay and can only build the tunnel. That would also cure the problem, which would mean that when the VMs in the VNet are making that routing decision, the only reachability they have is via the VPN gateway, which is learning those routes over BGP over IPsec. And this also addresses a, another question, which is, can I route some prefixes over the red underlay and some over the green underlay? Perhaps I have some subnets which are more sensitive than other subnets. Uh, and the answer is yes. I mean, you can, you can mix and match however you see fit based on how you advertise the routes. So for example, if you advertised the 192.168.1.0 range in the underlay, so these cloud edge routers they could have a prefix filter that says allow 1.0 into the underlay, but do not allow 2.0 into the underlay. When the VNets here look in their routing table and say, how do I get to those ranges? They will prefer express route if the prefix length is equal for the routes that you do leak in. And the reason why we make these recommendations here, either allowing the routes through or not, or summarizing or not, What's implied by making these recommendations and what's important to understand is we can't rely on BGP AS path prepend. So if you advertise in the same prefixes here on the underlay as you do on the overlay and you try and use BGP AS path prepend, for example, if you were to prepend the routes on express route with say plus three AS path, when those routes get injected into the virtual network, when the VM responds, Express Route will still win. So effectively, there's logic in the Azure platform, which is if I see a route via Express Route and via VPN, regardless of the BGP AS path, 
express route is going to win and the VM will use the express route path unless you follow one of these recommendations here. And that's captured in this warning box on the documentation. Okay, so a slightly different video, less detailed configuration, more explanation of an existing article, but I hope you found that useful anyway.